Hello everyone. Today is as a part of Fagokta online class, we will be discussing on the topic physical development. Uh, there are various aspects of physical development, but as of today, we will be discussing only on three areas. That is the meaning, the general pattern of physical growth and development, and the third, that is the factors that affect physical growth and development. Now coming to the meaning of physical development, physical development means the progressive development of various parts of the body and their capacity to function. It also refers to a process which brings bodily and physiological changes, internal as well as external, in an organism from conception till death. Physical development is the most readily visible of the child development domains. It implies a series of changes in size, proportions, and functioning from womb to tomb. Physical development involves changes in the height, weight, body proportion, and other physical appearance. It further involves changes in the functioning of glands, nervous systems, circulatory systems, respiratory systems, muscular system, lymphatic, and reproductive system. So the process of physical development plays a significant role in the proper adjustment and progress of an organism. In the beginning, the infant depends upon his parents and other members of the family for the satisfaction of his bodily niche. As a part of the changes brought by the physical development, his body organs become adaptable to his increasing body niche and gradually develop into a major responsible other. Now coming to the general pattern of physical growth and development, there are wide individual differences among the human beings. Therefore, it is not possible to describe a perfect general pattern of growth and development. Yet, physical growth and development seems to follow to some extent a general pattern which can help us to think about some definite structural changes in the case of normal children at this stage of their growth and development. We will summarize the general pattern of growth and development along with definite structural changes. Firstly, we have the increase in height and weight. On the average, at birth, a baby is about 19 or 20 inches in height and between 7 and 8 pounds in weight boys being slightly taller and heavier. Then during the first two years, there is a rapid increase in both head and weight. There is a steady and slow, slower growth from the third year till the onset of puberty. By five years, the head of the child approximately becomes almost double and he acquires almost five times his birth weight. Then during the period of adolescence, we again find a sudden increase in both head and weight. Girls reach puberty about a year or two, earlier than boys do. Therefore, between the age of 12 to 14, they are found slightly taller and heavier than boys, but they are again surpassed by the boys. By the end of adolescence, the young men are gradually like higher and heavier than the young women. Generally, both men and women get their maximum height and weight up to the end of adolescence. But there are very much variations in the weight as it is more susceptible to environmental influences. Therefore, it is no surprise to note the sudden increase or decrease in weight in later years after attaining maturity. Weight of the brain increased rapidly in the early years of life. By the time the child completes the age of four, his brain gains almost 80% of his final weight, another 10% being added by the time he completes his eight years. So by the 20 year, the brain gains almost all its weight. So coming to the second point, we have changes in body proportions. The child does not only grow in size, but also shows a marked change in the proportion of the different parts of the body. For example, the head constitutes about one-fourth the head of the body at birth. Its size is relatively much larger than the arms and the legs. As the child grows older, 
the proportion of the head decreases, and by the end of adolescence, it becomes one eighth of the body. In addition to the head, the other par body parts, legs, arms, etc., also show change in proportions as the child requires them more and more in his adaptation to coming life. Then the next point we have, number three, that is anatomical growth and development. Here, the bones of a child are not only smaller in size than the bones of an adult, but they differ also in their composition. The child's bones contain relatively a great amount of water and smaller quantity of mineral matter than those of the other. They are softer and more blood flows through them than through the bones of an adult. This accounts for their greater reliability, but it also increases the chances of bones, deformities, and infections. As regards to the eruption of teeth, it has been found that most of the children acquire their male teeth by the time they are two years of age. Near the end of the fifth year, the permanent teeth begin to appear, uh, the growth of which acquires a long time. The last four of the permanent teeth, which is also known as the wisdom teeth, erupt between the age of 17 and 25 years. Girls usually show more advanced teeth growth than the boys, except in the case of wisdom teeth, where boys are usually ahead of the girls. Coming to a point number four, we have growth, of, uh, growth and development of internal organs. From birth onward, the internal organs of the child uh, body undergo constant development. As a result, the child body system shows desirable changes in order to satisfy the growing niche. Below, we consider uh, the growth and development of these internal organs. Firstly, we can, uh, we'll discuss about uh, nervous system. It shows a rapid growth during the prenatal period and the first four years after birth. Before birth, the development consists primarily of increase in the number and size of the nerve cells because no new cells are formed after the birth. Therefore, the development in the first four years consists of the development of immature cells present at birth. Then after the age of four years, the growth of the nervous system proceeds at a relatively slow rate. Then we come to the muscular system. The muscular system also shows a remarkable development. Although no new muscles, fibers develop after birth, the muscles of the child are more delicate and less firmly attached to the bones than our adult's muscles. But gradually, the muscles get themselves changed in shape, size, and composition, and become firmer and stronger. Then number three, we have circulatory and respiratory system. Lungs, as well as the heart, are very small in early childhood, but they gradually uh, grow in volume as well as in weight and reach the maximum up to the end of adolescence. They also show desirable improvement in their functioning. The veins, as well as the arteries, do not follow the same growth pattern as that of the heart and the lungs. Prior to adolescence, they grow rapidly, whereas they show little growth during adolescence. Then coming to now point number four, we have the digestive system. The young child has a small tubular shaped stomach in comparison with a back like shaped stomach of the adults, which not only holds a large amount of food, but which also empties more slowly. Therefore, they require more feeding in the early years of their life than they will need later. In addition to the greater quality of food, they need uh, food with essential energy value for the rapid growth and development. Then the next point five that we have, lymphatic system. It is involved in the elimination of waste and the destruction of bacteria in the body. From birth onward, this system shows the sign of rapid development until it reaches to its maximum between the age of 11 and 12 years. After 12 years, it decreases rapidly. Then coming to the next point, that is reproductive system. The development of sex organs shows a peculiar trend in contrast with the overall growth and developmental pattern. Their rate of development is very slow during early childhood, 
but picks up its speed as the child advances towards adolescence and become almost developed up to the end of adolescence. The minor observation of the above mentioned pattern can reveal the following important facts regarding the general trend of physical growth and development. That is, uh, physical development, it is very rapid from birth to the age of two or three years. Then number two, it continues at a diminished rate till the beginning of adolescence. Then the first three years of adolescence are marked as the years of rapid growth and development. Then this is followed by a period of slow growth and development to the time of maturity. So coming to our next point that is factors affecting physical growth and development. Nature and nurture both contribute to the physical growth and development. Although watch and though by nature is constant, nurture tends to make a big difference too. The various factors affecting the physical growth and development can be discussed as follows. Firstly, we have heredity. Heredity is the transmission of physical characteristics from parents to their children through their genes. It influences all aspects of physical appearances such as their height, weight, body structure, color of the eye, texture of the hair, intelligence, and aptitudes. Diseases like diabetes, obesity, and etc. can also be passed through genes, thereby affecting the growth and development of a child adversely. Then, coming to the next point, that is number two, we have hormones. Hormones belong to the endocrine system and influence the various functions of our bodies. The timely functioning of hormones is critical for normal physical growth and development in children. Imbalances in the functioning of hormones, secreting glands can result in growth defects, obesity, behavioral problems, and other diseases. The next point, number three, we have sleep. Sleep is essential for proper physical development. As far as possible, children should have a bedroom to themselves free from noise. The amount of sleep the child should have varies with age and also from child to child but children should have a regular schedule. The next point, number four, we have gender. The sex of the child is another factor affecting the physical development of a child. Boys and girls, they grow in different ways, especially when they are nearing to their puberty. Boys tend to be taller and physically stronger than girls. However, girls tend to mature faster during adolescence while mature over a long period of time. The physical structure of their bodies has also differences which makes boys more athletic and suited for activities that require physical rigor. Coming to the next point, number five, that is exercise. Proper exercise helps children grow well and reach milestones on time or sooner. It also keeps them healthy and fights of diseases by strengthening their immune system, especially if they play outside. This is because outdoor play exposes them to microbes that help them build resistance and prevent allergies. Then the next point we have, number six, that is nutrition. Nutrition, as we know, is an important factor as everything the body needs to build and repair comes from the food we eat. Dietary deficiencies lead to loss of energy, which in turn makes the child behave in a manner that suggests that he is lazy or dull. Then malnutrition can also cause deficiency disease that adversely affect the growth and development, whereas overeating can also lead to obesity and other health problems in the long run. Thus, a balanced diet is essential for proper physical development of the body. The next point we have health. According to Harlock, Good health is essential not only for normal growth, but also for normal activity. The child whose health is full, even though he, he may not be actually ill, is handicapped in his mental as well as in his growth. Thus, good health is very essential. The next point we have, point number eight, that is geographical influences. Living in an enriching community that has 
parks, libraries, community centers for group activities, and sports play an important role in developing the child's skills, talents, and behavior. Uninteresting communities can push some children not to go outside often, but play indoor games at home instead. Even the weather of a place influences greatly the health of the children and affects their growth and development. Then coming to the last point, uh, that is point number nine, we have socioeconomic status. Parents from lower socioeconomic status cannot afford to provide good educational resources and nutritious food, which are very essential for the full potential development of their children. As such, children of poorer families are mostly lacking behind uh, those from richer families in their physical growth and development. That's all for today's session. Thank you and see you all in the next episode with other aspects of physical development.